Hi, I'm Tom Lowenstein, and I'm here today to talk to you about our woven wood shade with self-operating liner. This shade features a shade and liner that operate independently. For maximum privacy or room darkening, the liner can be left down. For less privacy or more light, the liner can be moved up. The self-operating liner also offers a neutral look to both inside and outside the home. The self-operating liner is fabricated with 6-inch pleat spacing. For enhanced safety, it's corded with our pre-corded cord shield. The self-operating liner is available in a light filtering or room darkening version. The cord shield is available in either solid colors or white shield with colored cord. Both the shade and the operating liner use our pre-corded cord shield. In order to cord the self-operating liner, the cord must first be removed from the cord shield. Cut the required amount of pre-corded cord shield necessary to cord the self-operating liner. Remove the cord from the pre-corded cord shield so that you have a section of cord shield and a section of cord. The self-operating liner and uncorded cord shield are stapled to the wood head rail. Note, the tabs of the liner are facing outward. Once this is done, the rib rods can be inserted into the liner tabs. Start with the tab below the grommets. Insert the rib rods into the remaining tabs. Rib rods are a feature of the self-operating liner shade. The rib rods are designed to prevent the cords and the split rings from tearing through the edge of the liner tabs. Cording an operable liner is the same as cording a shade. Feed the cord through the locks and the pulleys per cording requirements, then drop the cord through the grommets to the back of the shade. Once the cord is pulled through the grommets, it must be interlaced with the cord shield and then through the hole behind the rib rod in the tab of the liner. The cord must be interlaced in each section or opening of the cord shield. The process of interlacing the cord with the cord shield through the hole in the tab of the liner is repeated between each pleat in the liner until the entire liner is complete. The cord shield can be attached with either a split ring shown here or an optional loop lock. The split ring is attached to the cord shield through the ladder opening into the hole in the tab behind the rib rod. Once the liner is corded, then a stop ball is used to tie off the cord and cord shield at the bottom of the last tab. Insert the cord and cord shield into the hole of the stop ball and tie a knot. A small bead of clear glue can be applied to secure the knot. The bottom hem bar is used to provide weight for the liner. The liner will operate better with a weighted bottom. Slide a hem bar into the bottom hem of the liner. The hem bar can be secured within the liner by taping the hem bar in place with double-sided tape before sealing the hem. If additional weight is needed, then shade weights can be added to the hem bar before sealing the hem. Once the shade is completed and installed, the shade and liner can be operated independently. This allows for various options of light control and privacy. For enhanced safety precautions, cord cleats should be shipped with the shade. To reduce the risk of accidents, all cords should be kept out of reach of children and pets. Mount cord cleats at safe heights. After each use of the shade, wrap excess cord tightly around the cord cleat. Additional information can be found in the self-operating liner section of our Woven Wood Fabrication Manual. Thank you for your time today.